What it do, Dream Team? Welcome back to the channel. Here we are with another reaction video. And we tried to we, we reacted to multiple Isaac Butterfield videos. I feel like he explains things in an entertaining fashion. So here we are with him once again talking about England has fallen. I've reacted to multiple videos going on uh, about what's going on in England at the moment. So if you would like to know my stance on what's going on, hey, jump over to those videos, check them out. Uh, but before we dive into this one, if you happen to enjoy it, please don't forget to subscribe or give the video a thumbs up. Also, if you would like to make a request of your own, you can subscribe to Patreon and request it. There's a link in the description section where you can make a premium or a free request, or you can just drop a request right here in the comment section. However you want to do it, just be requested. Thousands of people have taken to the streets of towns and cities across England in counter demonstrations against a wave of riots by anti-immigration protesters. Violence and vitriol on the streets of the United Kingdom, targeting migrants and mosques in an ugly eruption of anti-immigrant sentiment. For more than a week, riots breaking out in city after city. That's Film insane. From police officer's body camera from behind a riot shield. This is County Road in Liverpool on Saturday night. That's crazy. Ladies and gentlemen, over the past two weeks, England, the mother country, it has fallen into chaos. Thousands yeah. of far right radical individuals, and that's what these people are called if they dare to go and protest. So that's what I'll be calling them because I want to, okay. you know, remain on YouTube. And I have to be very careful with what I say. <laughs> he said, and that's what I will be calling them because, you know, I want to remain on YouTube. In this video, absolutely. Yes, all these far right thugs found themselves on the streets protesting who knows what. Something ridiculous, something small, like... Um, I think it was three young girls being unalived at the That's hands really of a psychopath. And I'll get into more of that and why that response by these people being labelled as far right was ridiculous and unnecessary. Mm. But this is something that hasn't just happened overnight. It's not just one thing that has caused this. And you've got to mm. understand that the... That's what I also said in a lot of my videos. I don't know everything that's going on in England. I don't really... Like keep up with all their current uh, events inside of the country or much current events around the world. But I just, I imagine that it couldn't all be started. Like like the riots that I was seeing, I imagine those riots look like frustration that had been built up over time. Now I will never agree with violence. I will never agree with violent riots. Now you protest peacefully, that uh, I have no issue with uh, expressing yourself as long as you are not causing harm to someone else's property or, you know what I'm saying, to people themselves. Now, what happened to those three little girls is absolutely horrific, and it was an evil deed done by the, this person. Uh, I can't, I don't even know the name of this person, but it was absolutely evil, and um, in a world where so much evil happens, it's just, it's it's heartbreaking to be reminded of the evil that humanity is capable of. The media really are the people here in control of making one group involved in this uh, seemingly the enemy, and that is mm. anyone who dares to question immigration. They are seen as far-right racists, and sure, there are some people here that are just pieces of shit, and, and we shouldn't listen to them at all, but some of these people, maybe many of these people who are involved in these protests, just want to feel safe. Now, immigrants mm. are not bad people. I shouldn't mm -mm. have to say that, but I will, because if I don't, someone might point out that I must hate them. That's ridiculous. Yeah. We're all immigrants at some point. That Factual. said, it Facts. seems like the Western world is consistently destroying itself by letting in any lunatic who wants to join us. Now, do mm. I think that some people should be able to come into my country? Of course, of course I do, if they're good people. But it's not like yeah. that at all. We're letting anyone in, and that's that's the R word, ladies and gentlemen. We're just letting anyone in that wants to turn up. And that's what these protests are about. Not just mm. the dangerous people that we are letting into our countries, but also the number of people that we're letting in. Because that affects all of us. I said this in a video probably six or eight months ago about Australia. We're letting in far too many immigrants, 
of oh, all wow. different skin colours, white people included, and this is really affecting people who live in this country. People can't mm. afford houses because there's too many people, not enough houses. When I you have that. open borders, and that's what the yeah. youth... See, and I feel like uh, immigration, like me, I don't have an issue with immigration, but a lot of people in these videos are saying we don't have an issue with the immigration. We have an issue with illegal immigration because you don't know who is getting into the country. If you immigrate or if you migrate legally, however you say it, right, you have to sign all the paperwork, you know what I'm saying, and the country, you know who's in the country, but if you do it through illegal matters, you don't know who's coming into the country, and I can understand it from that aspect. Um, it does make sense. Still, I hate uh, for someone to not be able to, to go to another country if they're country is is at war or it's dangerous in their country or they they just seek more opportunity in another country um and so it's very hard for me to sit here and say that uh people shouldn't be able to move freely around different countries but at the same time i also have the understanding that hey countries can only maintain a certain number of people can only sustain a certain number of people before it starts taking too big of a toll on these people that are in that country um and when that toll is being taken then you start seeing these uprisings then you start seeing people get fed up and people can't survive anymore and so once people are unable to survive yeah they're going to take to the streets they're going to protest they're going to riot they're going to do a lot of these things so immigration is an issue that I don't know the answer to. That's the best way I can put it. I, I don't know the answer to. UK has an America, you have it as well, and I'm pretty sure Australia is very, very close to it. It is obviously dangerous because you're letting in anyone. Take New York, for example. They're not bordering any other country, but if you cross the border from Mexico into Texas, let's say, you're gonna get bust straight to New York City and be on the streets in hours. Oh, wow. Doesn't matter who you are. You may be a lovely Mexican person just looking to join America and be, become mm. part of that. Or you might be a murderous Chinese person or Russian person or Ukrainian person straight out of a war or, a, or something, something horrible. Maybe you just got let out of jail in your own country and you've left and gone to join America and then all of a sudden you're thrown in a bus and you're on the streets surrounded by just normal everyday people, as normal as people can be in New York, New York City because it's already a dangerous place, but it's not making it any <laughs> yeah. better. They just get dumped there and we're seeing that in Europe Europe and the UK as well. Look at Paris. So much horrific shit has happened there since the Olympics started that people just aren't talking about because they don't want to be seen oh as racist. Skin colour, language and place of birth has nothing to do with who should and shouldn't be led into a country at all. Agreed. Nor does religion. It comes Agreed. down to the people. Agreed. But we're not doing Agreed. that. Agreed. We're just letting anyone in because we're scared of being labelled as racists. It's all about the content of people's character. Is this not obvious? Keep the bad people in their own countries and let them deal with it and let the good ones in at rates that we can actually look after and start to actually have the focus on people born in that country, regardless of the color of their skin or where their grandparents were from. All of this, these open borders and these fears that politicians have is leading us to where we are right now in the UK. Where, after a psycho, an absolute psycho, stabbed and murdered three little girls and That's injured sick, others, I think there was like 12 other children, wow. a horrific event, absolutely horrific. And that is truly, truly, truly horrifying. Like, that is, that is such an, such evil. It's such an evil deed. Um, my God, it's, it's horrifying and it's, it's scary. To think that somebody could act, is capable of that. But I do understand everything that Isaac Butterfield is saying. He is making a lot of sense. I think the things he is saying are just logical, if I'm being honest. Um, yeah. So far, I would have to agree with what he's saying. This is the media's image that they used of this dude. I don't know why. You're telling me there's not another photo on social media? This is the one you use? That's just fucking weird. People started rioting after this. A lot of white people. People who were now labelled as far right. 
Now, the information they received was this, this guy was, a, uh, was an immigrant and was uh, a Muslim. Now, it turns out that mm -hmm. that information may very well have been wrong, and they attacked a mosque. Well, that's terrible, okay? Yeah. And what happens from that is the Muslim population of that area turn up and go, fuck you, and then it's a big fucking riot and it happens all over the country. But this doesn't happen from one event. This is a pressure no. cooker. It's got been going to be. for so long it's in the UK, and it's gotten to a point where it's hit the red and it's just exploded. Crime is up, particularly knife crime, mass immigration, joblessness, the cost of living crisis, all of this shit. COVID fucked a lot of people. It's all built up, all this pressure. No one can get a house anymore. You can't get good jobs because all these other people from other countries are coming in. Doesn't matter the color of their skin. Can I make that any clearer? Okay? Color of your skin. Doesn't matter in this conversation. If you're not from that country and you've turned up from wherever you're from, you are taking jobs off the people that are there and thus this upsets the locals. It'd be the same as if you turned up in a different country to where you are right now. You would upset the locals by doing so. So much pressure mm -hmm. and bang, it erupts into violence. But. There's a lot more reasons, according to theconversation.com. They like to blame, uh, number one, the middle-aged radicals, the white racists. Oh, wow. Number two, the political elites who have enabled Islamophobia. Number three, the phony masculinity of racists. Number four, the unspoken problem of English nationalism. I don't think there's anything wrong with nationalism. Number five, you should be proud of your country. You should be very, very proud. You should be a good... Yes, that never... Ne nationalism has never bothered me. People being proud of where they're from has never bothered me. I, when it gets to a point where like you go to other places and expect them right to accommodate to you because you feel like you're the greatest thing on earth and you're from the greatest place on earth, that's when it becomes a problem. Um, but yeah, being proud of your country and showing that is not an issue. Uh, yes, it definitely looked like it was a pressure cooker situation. Like things have happened over time and frustration has been built up and why I don't think it should be taken out on one community or, you know what I'm saying, on, on one religious group or why I don't think that's fair to that group of people. I can understand the frustration building up and they just aimed their frustration. I feel like maybe, at, not maybe, I feel like they aimed the frustration at the wrong people. I feel like the frustration should be more targeted towards lawmakers and politicians and people that are in power to put policies or laws into place to help the country whether that be cutting back on immigration whether that what it, in whatever way shape or form it is their responsibility as chosen people as chosen government elected by the people to serve the people person you should be proud uh the hypocrisy in the in-group logic now the media has gone in on people born in england now these are not just white people, not just middle-aged people, they're people of all different skin colors. They've gone in on them, attacking them. And I don't know, it's shit. Because Muslim people shouldn't have to deal with this shit, no doubt. Mm -mm. But nor should anyone. Nor, people no. should feel safe. People should feel, regardless of who you are, what religion you are, you should Agreed. feel safe in your own street, in your own house, in your own country. And I guess that's the thing here. British people's problem isn't with Muslims, or white people's problem isn't with Muslims, it's with shit people. There's too many shit people because there's Agreed. too many shit people coming over your shit border. Now, this video realistically isn't so much about what's what these riots are about or how can we stop the riots. It's the government's reaction to mm. this is from the United Kingdom's government. Think before you post content that incites violence or hatred isn't just harmful, it can be illegal. Okay, incites violence or hatred. Well, who decides what hatred That's is? Exactly. I don't think, uh, I mean, I definitely don't agree with people inciting violence or hatred. Uh, I think as people, we got to learn to come together. You got to learn to love your neighbor. Um, but at the same, like I do, like who who is making the decisions on what is, because what incites violence to you might not be what incites violence to someone else or what you don't think incite violence might actually to some people they might feel that that does incite violence or hatred so it's very hard in deciding what post or whatever what people are saying is who's deciding what incites it uh violence or hatred now if it's just outright 
you are absolutely like, hey, guys, we need to stand up. There's a mosque at the end of our street. We need to go down there and take care of them. Then, yes, like, you are inciting violence. Uh, but if it's just like, we won't stand for this anymore. Let's take to the streets and protest. It's not inciting violence or hatred. It's just frustration and fed up and you want to do something about it. But you didn't say anything violent or you didn't incite any kind of violence or hatred. So I guess, but then that's me over here deciding. So who decides it? Who gets to be because that? Because if you're uh, being hateful to someone because of uh, because they're a different color to you or a different religion to you, that's not cool. But what if you misgender someone? That's also hate speech. What if you use their old name, oh, dead wow. name? That's known as hate speech. So that's really hateful. is that illegal? Is saying that you disagree with Islam on a particular subject or mm. Judaism on a particular subject? Is that hateful? And can they say that about Christianity mm. or Catholicism? Does it go back and forth? What your government is doing is they are dictating what you can and cannot say. They are big brother. They are the thought police. We saw this shit in Scotland over the past decade now. They've been controlling speech for a very long time there. It is disgraceful. Wow. And now it seems to be happening here as well. Who is this governor to tell you that you have to be locked in a cage, to lock you in a cage because of something you've said on the internet? because they deem it hateful. The Crown Prosecution Service takes online violence seriously, and they should, and will prosecute when the legal test is met. Remind those close to you to share responsibility or face the consequences. Locked in a cage. Some of these people for tweets. Thousands oh, wow. of people from England have been locked up because of this. Even yeah. people just sharing for tweets. Locked in a cage. And it's not just the UK. It turns out that no one is safe anywhere in the world because the UK government's coming for you. We will throw the full force of the law at people. And whether you're in this country committing crimes on the streets, or committing crimes from further afield online, we will come after you. And as I said before, there are genuine racists involved here. Hateful people, like this piece of shit. You Muslim terrorist bastard! You fucking racist! See, that's, that's disgusting, and that's what, what truly, truly bothers me. Like, that's just sickening. You Muslim terrorist bastard! You Muslim bastard! Fuck that. That's, that's not welcome in any country. But another no. reason that people are upset because they see a two-tier version of policing. If you're- I've seen you know, that as and well in this different out, videos. If you're a people certain being skin color, you might get away that. with a lot more than people who are not that skin color. Hmm, yeah. interesting. It's not an appropriate way to set your society. The police are scared, ladies and gentlemen. They don't want to get in trouble by putting someone who happens to have a different skin color to them behind bars. They don't want to be labeled a racist. And that's not a good way to keep a country safe. You should lock anyone up if they fucking have a knife on them or they do something violent regardless of their skin colour. But they don't. Agreed. Look at this prick. Look at that. That's fucked. Or this, even, in oh Europe, in Germany. God. For fuck's sake. There's a lot of people in fear to do their jobs. Oh my God. We should be locking up bad people. That's obvious. We shouldn't be letting exactly. in as many people into our countries, okay? Doesn't matter about their skin colour or where they're from. We should lower immigration rates in Australia, in the UK, in America, and look after your people. How is that such a foreign concept? Mm. Like Jordan Peterson says, clean your room. That's what he's fucking talking about. Clean your fucking room, UK government, all right? Have you handled homelessness? Have you handled all the mental health crises in your, in your country? No, you haven't. So why are you trying to fix everybody else? I understand why people are upset and we, no one should be getting attacked for any of this. Muslims shouldn't be getting attacked for any of this. No. But I understand why people feel so hard done by when their own government doesn't seem to give a fuck about them. This isn't a battle between Christians and Muslims or whites and blacks or men or women. It's genuinely good people versus bad people. That's, That's how it should, it should be anyway. Be. We should be rallying together That's to cut out be. all the shit people. And those shit people don't, they're not defined by skin colour or ethnicity or gender. But we should know who the shit people are and don't let them anywhere fucking near our borders. Ladies and gentlemen, let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Be a good motherfucker. Peace in the Middle East. We dig stinks. Toodle au revoir. Bye. I agree with what he's saying, but I also uh, understand that, like, sometimes people are good people that have a bad day 
or go through a rough patch in life and do evil acts. And so it's not like you can just like know somebody's a crap person immediately. There are crap people that I feel like government and everyone is aware of and they should they should face consequences. Uh, but sometimes you, you can't know all of them are crap people. It's just sometimes they're good people who go through a certain circumstance or a situation and by performing an evil act become bad people. Um, but yeah, when it comes to immigration, uh, I definitely understand locals or people born in that country getting upset because things are changing around them because jobs, they feel like jobs are being taken from them. They feel like the government doesn't care about them. But on the other hand, I also feel that, uh, I, I wouldn't block somebody coming into another country if they're looking for more opportunity, if they're coming from a dangerous country, or if they, they just, they can't stay in their country anymore because I don't know, there, there's nothing there. I'm not sure whatever reason, uh, everybody I feel like has a story or a circumstance or a situation that they're going through. And so, I wouldn't just say, like, close the borders. I know he didn't say that. He just said, you got to learn to, like, take care of the people inside of your country first before you continue allowing so many more people inside. And I understand that 100%. Uh, so, immigration is just a very hard topic to talk about just because it's, like, it's hard to take a firm stance when you understand both sides of the argument. Uh, yeah. Let me know how you guys feel in the comment section. Very intrigued to hear what you guys think. But that's all we have for this one. If you guys enjoyed that, please don't forget to like or subscribe. Also, check out that next video. It's your boy, d -Neil. Out.